First of all, coming off of Wednesday, short turnaround, how's the group um, in preparation for Sunday? Good. Today's you know, what we call game day plus two, so it's still kind of a turnaround day. Most of the guys outside doing uh, just kind of their recovery work and all that kind of stuff. Tomorrow we'll have a short preparation session like we normally do a game before a game, and the guys will be ready to go on, I think everybody will be ready to go on Saturday, sorry, Sunday evening. Uh, so again, being the, having the three days or the uh, three full days plus the game day, which is most of a day to recover, guys are usually back to where they need to be. Uh, like I said to you, I think on the weekend, usually this day in a normal training week, we go almost a full game load anyways. Uh, so it'll fit inside of what they're used to doing more or less. So. And, you know, they added the uh, Open Cup a couple of days away here. How does that day, does that day affect how you approach Sunday, Wednesday? Yeah. Sunday, so Wednesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Saturday yeah, potentially Tuesday. Uh, not really. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to approach this home game with everything to try to win the home game, and then we'll reassess and see where we are on the weekday. I think the toughest turnaround we're going to have is between Sunday and Wednesday because we're within that. You have to travel to Columbus, uh, play off of two days of rest. That's going to be the difficult transition, uh, so you know, likely some modifications inside of that. And then I think once you're on the East Coast, it's not so bad to, to go from D.C. to or from Columbus to D.C. It's like an hour. Um, you know, depending on how we approach Wednesday, we'll probably see something a little different on you know, Saturday. You know, we'll try to get the guys, manage the guys through this week for sure. As we come back, we'll, we'll see where we're at uh, before we determine where exactly what it's going to look like when we, we play the next Open Cup game. So a little bit of this, just see how guys respond game by game. How much of your depth do you expect to have to use during this game? I like to use a lot of it. I like to, you know, there's a lot of guys who've played some minutes here or there. There's some guys at the start of the season who were starting that haven't played a ton recently that need another opportunity again. Uh, you know, I think we've got guys who are chomping at the bit to show that they're ready to help the team, and this is that opportunity for, for everybody to step in and, uh, yeah, and to contribute and to make a case and to, you know, to help the team pick up points. And <clears throat> I think from now through most of the rest of the season, it's going to be busy. And so between different competitions, you know, the first eight to, so eight to ten weeks or so, you have one game every week, which sometimes feels slow even. And now we're starting to really pick up where you really need the full roster to, to be able to compete in these different events. Do you, do you plan? Um, you know, I, this guy's going to get a rest here, this guy's going to rest there. Or is it uh, play by ear or a combination? No, we, I, I, plan, I plan it out. And then based off of a plan, I have the ability to adapt inside of the plan, but I always will map it out a little bit for guys and then we'll see. We'll see. I, what I've learned about plans is to be ready to adjust them quickly whenever you make a plan that it tends to not go to plan, but uh, generally speaking, we have a starting point to, of a foundation of a plan and we'll stick to it as closely as we can, you know, as, as we keep moving. Are there just too many competitions right now? Uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, I, I think right now we're just for us in particular, we're inside of the league and Open Cup, which it, whenever Open Cup comes in the equation, you get a busier week. What I, what I, our particular schedule, and I know, you know, Seattle felt the same this past week, is when you play three games in six days is really difficult. And when you add travel across the country into those six days, it becomes even more difficult. And so to me, that's where it's hard. It's not so much three and seven, or you're playing those midweek games, or that. That is, I think, normal everywhere in the world. People do stuff like that. I, I, but people don't generally travel, you know, five hours on an airplane and uh, two time zones or three time zones to to try to prepare in two days. Uh, that's that's a different scenario, and so that's where I think it gets a little bit adjust, uh, gets a little bit crammed up. You know? Is it comparable to how you have to play, at least the way it was uh, and still is in some places, that college schedule where you play two games in three days and, again, two games in three days week after week after week? Yeah, college guys are young. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, college guys are they're young. And even within inside of that, you'll get a lot of college coaches saying it's crazy. And so uh, now you're talking about pros and, and guys who are much older, guys who uh, – 
are well-oiled machines and need certain things, of course, uh, and also our big investments. Like that just is a, it's a, it's a different, it's a challenge, right? Um, so for us, it's just again, that's where you need depth in your roster. You need guys to step up. You, you, you want to have clarity in the things that you that you want to be accomplishing over this window, and you want to be as efficient as possible. Do you feel like you have the depth that you need? I think it'll be, I think we're good. I think, you know, like I said, there's guys who have stepped on and helped us as in substitute roles that I think are due for an opportunity to start a game and see how they manage that. Um, you know, again, the challenge is, do you have enough depth and go on the road in Columbus and go on the road in DC and then come all the way back and play LAFC? You don't know until you go through that uh, you go through that exercise. But I like the group that we have. I think guys, like I said, guys who've stepped on have impacted. I thought everyone who came on the field the other night had an impact on the game. Uh, and I know that that everybody who we will call upon is hungry and eager to help the team. And so, um, and I think there's quality inside of each of these players that will will help us. Any changes in the timeline for Douglas, Mavinga, and Kobol? I don't know specifically what you know their timelines are exactly. Sega is uh, probably I don't know between two and four weeks. It's just depending on how uh, he's getting a little treatment now. It's just depending on how he responds and is the as the pain subsides and the, some of the inflammation and stuff in the area starts to subside, he'll get back on the field and then it's just going to be as tolerated. He'll start to move back. So I don't know how you really yet put a timeline on it but the expectation is you know probably inside of four weeks roughly you know uh that's the hope as we get to to douglas he he worked off site last week at a therapy clinic and was getting some very specific treatment and uh which was great for him he got just one-on-one -on -one treatment and and the work that he needed to do and now he's back in the facility typically with that injury it's you know four to six weeks you know, the before it's a soleus, which is almost always uh, four to six weeks. You hope for, and you just don't know exactly until you get out and start to really run and work and do what you got to do. Uh, Chris, you know, we're we're hoping we're you know within a couple weeks getting him. He was back. He was out on the field doing his running today and all that kind of stuff. And so now it's just incremental progressions until he's ready to go. So. So obviously the priority is the league, but how much uh, changed your plans, the fact that now you have to face uh, LAFC in the Open Cup? Because this is a game, obviously, the fans wants to win. It sure. doesn't matter where, even friendly or any competition. Yeah, it doesn't really change our plans too much. Just, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we're interested in the Open Cup. We, we want to, we'd like to win the Open Cup. Um, we'll, we will manage our group through this whole process and guys like we would do other anyways in the course of six games in three days is we're going to have to do some rotation and we're going to have to work through this. Uh, but when we get to the next Open Cup game, we're going to put the best team out that, that we can that we feel like we can get a result and try to advance again. So it doesn't change too much of, of from our planning perspective where we're approaching things the same way. Just your thoughts on Space San Jose. Yeah, I think, you know, they've gotten off to a great start. Uh, they've made some good additions to the group. Obviously, Lucci has stepped in as uh, the coach. I know Lucci well. Uh, and so, you know, I think they're pretty clear on the things that they're trying to do. They brought in, you know, another center back who's a good athletic, big, strong kid in the back. And uh, Rezo, who we had in Dallas, has is, is come into the midfielder who's a combative and quick and uh, really understands what Lucci wants to do. Uh, so... Um, Espinoza is a very good player. I've always liked his game and the things that, that uh, he's able to do. Uh, Ebubise has obviously been on a great run since he's been in San Jose, so he's a handful. Uh, so, again, I, I think they have a good group. I think they're, they're, you know, with Luch, I think they're pretty clear on what they're trying to do. I think, you know, having played with Luch or against Luch uh, over the years in Dallas, I think we have a good sense of what he wants to do inside of the game. I think he has some influences of being with the World Cup team and with Burhalter, you see some of those influences inside of what they're doing as well. But I think they have a good group. Again, I think a lot of it for us is uh, is to focus on some key things. I think we need to, I thought last last game, we were just better in, in better attacking positions. Uh, and um, so it's just, again, recognizing a few things within inside of that where we can be a little more dangerous in a couple situations. 
the other part of it is just being more efficient on the defensive side. Uh, I felt like you know our spacing defensively and uh, the clarity that we want to have in defending through parts of the game wasn't as crystal clear as we would like it to be. And then we were defending a little lower at times than we would want to be, which makes the field very long. And I think we just need to be just a touch more efficient, which will also help us in the attacking transition because we'll recover balls in better areas of the field. That's the one thing that I'd like us to be. It's, it's really kind of there. Because again, I think that will add another dimension to us, which is just more attacking transition opportunities where we're not having to break down 10, 11 guys over most possessions. And so uh, that's the one thing that we're just talking about as a group is just to be a little more efficient on the defending side of things. But it's good. San Jose over a bit of a spell has been a very difficult team to play against. Yeah. Is that continuing under Lucci? And what, are, what makes them difficult? Yeah, look, I, you know, previously it was always unique and different to play against a man-on-man -man system that Almeida would play. Just you never really see it, and they were just so classic man-on-man -man that uh, it was always a unique preparation to play against them. You know, I think what, what Luch has inherited is a handful of players who are comfortable in that type of scenario, so they're very responsible when it comes to their marking responsibilities and dealing with their reference points. They're also athletic. They're also got some good size on them in terms of the back, and they manage things in the air, and they close you quickly. Uh, so I think, he, you know, again, as a new coach in, there's it's an invigorated group. You can see them you know, really kind of sprinting and closing and, and doing some things that, uh, that may be coming out of just being in that what is a really difficult man-on-man -man style to something that's a little more fluid, that there's a little bit of a release for some of the guys that are out there, maybe a little more freedom than, than what they had pri previously. I don't know. I just feel like that those are sometimes things that can happen when you come out of a, just a, such a strict style into something that's a little bit more fluid. And so uh, I think, yeah, I think they've added good pieces to their team too. You know, I've always thought they've had some, some good pieces. Caden Cowell's a guy who's coming along as a player. You know, a couple of years ago, you'd say he was young and very – a little bit rough around the edges and he's just you can see his game maturing and he's becoming a more a better player uh Kikanovic is another young player who's continuing to improve uh, again i've always liked espinoza i've always liked yule i've always liked these guys who are now coming into their own inside of uh inside of the san jose system and so uh yeah i think i think they've gotten off to a good start and when you get good momentum in the beginning it just drives energy into the group and i think they're they're feeding off of a lot of those things I like Yule since he was a Bruin. Yeah, yeah, I liked his game too. I mean, versatile midfielder. He's they've used him in many different ways. He's a good soccer player, and that's uh, I've always liked his game as well.